Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to our Battle Canada live event with our Cook for Cause. I've got Chef Dennis with us today. Um, we're just getting started, so just give us a moment while we get all set up technologically. And then he's going to like cook some awesome stuff. Okay. Perfect. So I think we're pretty much ready to go. <laughs> All the technical things. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is a beautiful Saturday. I want to welcome you all. My name is Richie Valdez, your host for our Battle Live events. Um, Battle Canada, for those of you that don't know, it, our mission is to be the best outdoor cultural sports and music festival to serve the diverse cultural mosaic that is Canada. So what we have here is during this um, uh, COVID time, what we try to do is um, with our mission to raise funds for both Sick Kids Hospital and Montreal Children's Hospital, we've set up this Cook for Cause. And today we have Chef Dennis Tay with us. Have him. Um, I'm sure all of you guys who follow his Instagram are seeing his ridiculous cooking with his hashtag Filipino Quarantino. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of us, um, now we have an opportunity to actually watch him live in doing that. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, so Chef, you've had lots of experience. I've come to several of your pop-ups. Um, currently, you're the chef at, sorry, chef de cuisine at uh, Dilo Toronto. Um, it's an Asian restaurant. It's delicious, ridiculous amounts of food. Um, and you specialize in seasonal modern Asian cooking. Um, and then again, you have um, birthed this whole isolation food movement called Filipino Quarantino. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so welcome, chef. Thank you for joining us. So can you tell everybody what you're making for us today? Uh, so today I'm going to be doing, um, the sound is all messed up. I, I, I got to move my phone a little bit. So. Yeah, just a teeny, is that good? <laughs> oh, that's much better. Yeah. That's I'm going to focus on the Zoom uh, first. Oh, man. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficulty. Yeah. yeah, that looks good. You can, are you going to move, you're going to move it around a bit? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's talk about um, what I'm going to cook first. Yep. How's that? Does it sound okay there? Yep. You know what you can do? You can put the volume down on your cell phone. Yes. Yeah, let's try that. And then we'll go from there. Hey, y'all. While he's getting ready, welcome again to the Battle Live event. We're here for a Cook for Cause to raise funds for both uh, Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto as well as Montreal Children's Hospital. Perfect. All right. How's the sound on that, Richie? I'm good with that. Everyone on Instagram, are you guys good with that sound? Okay, it looks like we're okay. Okay, awesome. Um, so real quick, I'm just gonna be doing uh, 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 like a banana leaf wrapped uh, whole fish that's uh, marinated in like chili paste, bagaong, um, it's called inahau na isda, which just means like roasted roasted fish. Uh, I'm gonna do some uh, ginataang kangkong. Ginataang is anything cooked in coconut milk. Kangkong is uh, like water spinach, morning glory. Um, it's my favorite green to eat. And then I'm gonna show you really quick, just classic garlic fried rice and sao sawan. Sao sawan is just like sauce or dip. Um, that's pretty much on every table for every meal in a Filipino household. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Yeah. How have you been during this COVID time? Yeah, I've been okay. It's uh, It's been challenging. Um, I got two young kids and we've been separated from my wife because she works in a hospital. So um, we've been isolating away from her. Um, I'm in Windsor and she's in Toronto. Actually, she works at Sick Kids. Um, and uh, so that's been challenging, just uh, like 
educating the kids because there's no school, keeping busy. The restaurant's closed. So uh, just trying to stay out there and keep my skills sharp. That's why I kind of started the whole Filipino quarantino thing. Um, yeah, a lot of chefs like started cooking at home and and all that. And I just wanted to get in on the action really. Well, you're doing an awesome job. I follow you. <laughs> I love your food. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so let's try this. There is an echo still. Let's okay. switch, um, put the volume down on your iPad. Okay. Let's try that first. Thank, thank you, Shokan. Okay, testing one, two, three. Is that better, guys? Nope, still there. Still there? Yep. Should I just turn it all the way off on? Yeah. Turn one of your devices completely on silent and then uh, put the volume all the way down for one of them. Hey, y'all. Hey, thanks. Hey, y'all. Still an echo, eh? Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, guys. We're just fixing the echo. Do, 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 do. Testing one, two, three. That sounds like it. Is that better? Let me see. Testing. No, it's still echoing. I turned the volume down on my oh, phone all the way. Oh, they better. said it's better. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Yes. So what I'll do is I'll pass it over to you again real quick. For those of you joining, thank you and welcome. Um, this is the Battle Live event. We've got Chef Dennis Tay. He's going to take it away and cook for us some delicious food. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to start with the fish, the whole fish, because uh, while that's cooking, we can get all that other stuff out of the way. It's really quite simple, all the, uh, all the dishes I'm doing. So if you're joining along, it does go a bit quick, but um, yeah, it's doable. I hope. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna get, grab the fish from the fridge. Hey all, thanks for joining. He's just stepped away. He's gonna grab his fish from the fridge, nice and fresh. And he's gonna teach us how to make whole uh, roasted fish and banana loop. All right, so this is the fish we're gonna use. It's called a pimp, uh, pompano, it's a golden pompano. Uh, this one I got at just the Asian market over here on the IG. Um, they're quite affordable. Um, they usually come frozen, but you can also find them like um, fresh on the counter at any, at any Asian market. Um, it's really tasty. Obviously this dish is, mo is like, was made for uh, like charcoal grilling and the banana leaf kind of protects the fish flesh when you're using like high heat charcoal. Uh, but because um, my parents don't have a grill, I'm uh, just gonna use it in the oven and kind of do like a, a version in the oven. And first, we're gonna prep the fish. So I'm gonna just score it on both sides, which means just putting slits like right on the flesh. This one's already been cleaned at the market. So uh, like no muss, no fuss. Okay, just like that. You want to cut kind of close to the bone, like right to the bone even, okay? That way, like everything you put on top gets like into the flesh, really flavors the, the fish really well. And then it cooks a little bit quicker and more even as well. Okay. Now we're gonna make the marinade for, for the pompano. Um, it's pretty easy as well. All these things, if you don't have in your pantry, you can find them at the Asian grocery store. They're very, very common. Um, so first we're gonna use a chili paste. This is like an Indonesian chili paste. It's called sambal olek. It's really great. The exact measurements are on the recipe, but uh, I'm kind of just gonna freestyle it here for, <laughs> for everybody. Okay, a little chili paste. This guy here is tamarind paste. Okay, 
So that goes in as well. Just gonna fix the angle on this for a sec. Okay. Um, this here, Baga Ong. This is a uh, fermented uh, shrimp paste. This one is um, sauteed. So uh, Baga Ong Guisado, it's called. <clears throat> this stuff I use in almost everything. <laughs> so good. It's a little funky. This one's the spicy one as well. So I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of that. I'm going to mince up some garlic as well, put that in there. This dish is a little spicy. It, it like it seems like it would be very spicy, but it's it's not that spicy to start. Okay, give that a rough chop. into the marinade. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little lime juice in the marinade as well. My favorite, obviously, patisse, fish sauce. This one is three crabs, it's a Vietnamese fish sauce. Um, there are so many good ones out there. I like to switch it up, I don't really stick with one brand, put a good amount because it's the best. We've got a good mix. And I'm gonna balance all this out with just a little bit of honey. Okay, now that's it for the marinade. I'm gonna grab the, uh, the banana leaves themselves. Um, these you kind of have to wash. They can be a little bit dirty when you get them from the store. So here we are, banana leaves. Just take out enough. Um, that'll just wrap your fish. This stuff you can like refreeze and use again. It's uh. It's awesome. Hey, Chef, one of the things I've always wanted to know. Yes. Is when you purchase those, what's the proper way of cleaning them? Uh, the banana blossom? Yes. Like, or the leaves, um, sorry. Oh, yeah, the banana leaves, sorry. Uh, yeah, to be honest, you just run it under water and give it a good wipe. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a wash right now. And I'll show you it. You really just got to wipe it pretty hard. And I'll show you how dirty they can be. You don't need to bake it or anything. What's that? You don't need to bake it or anything? No, you don't. Um, if you want, at restaurants, what they do is they heat it really quickly uh, with either like a torch or in an oven or on a grill and it gives it like a, a shine and it makes it look like super, super clean. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you can see the dirt on there. It does, get, it does seem, it does get a little dirty. So um, just clean that up. This one too. Okay, and that's about it for those. Now I'm gonna take my fish and I'm gonna start prepping it to be wrapped, okay? So first, we're gonna take uh, my lime, I'm gonna give it a couple slices. We're gonna stuff it, uh, stuff the cavity with like lime and orange. 
kind of to mimic calamansi. It is not easy to get calamansi in Windsor. So in Toronto, even for that fact. Okay, just like this. Just put it right into the cavity of the fish, jam it in there. And then I'm gonna slice a little bit of onion as well to put in there. Actually, I'm gonna season it first. So season the cavity first. I'm using this like crazy fish sauce salt. It's called Red Boat. It's a Red Boat, like Patisse salt. It's the best stuff ever. And then take your onion as well and put it right into the uh, cavity of the fish. The cavity of a pompano is not that that big, so it doesn't take much to get it stuck. Okay. So there we are. Now, one sec. Now you just really cover the fish with that marinade. Let me give it a taste first. Should be salty, sour, uh, spicy, and a little bit of uh, sweetness in there as well. Gonna add a little bit more sugar, more honey. Okay, and just like liberally all over this thing. My oven is already preheated to uh, to 400. So it's ready to go in there right away. I'm actually gonna turn my uh, burner on here as well and get that hot. I'm gonna give it a quick sear just to get like the roasting process going. That way it'll cook a little faster as well. That toasted banana leaf flavor is gonna come in a lot better too if you give it a quick roast at the beginning. Wash your hands like we do 45 times a day nowadays. Okay, now we're just gonna wrap this fish up. You don't have to be super tight with it. Like you don't have to tie it or anything like that. Like you're just really protecting the skin and the fish of the fish when you're doing this. Okay. Just like that little package. All right. Into this pan, just a little bit of oil. Okay. And once that starts to smoke, it's good to go. I like to use a cast iron for almost everything. Um, yeah. Uh -oh. Pause. Hey, y'all. Thanks for joining. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It said my, uh, no worries. It says I was paused here for some reason. Okay. All right, so let's just get like this. Once that gets warm, I'll get, I'll get back to that. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, the water spinach, the kangkong. So that's this green leaf here. Again, it's my favorite. And one of the reasons why it's my favorite is because the stem is hollow. So it really like keeps all that sauce, like all the sauce and the flavor uh, that you cook it with in there. And then the leaves are really nice and tender, but the flavor in general is just, I don't know, for some reason I love it. It's super comforting for me. Like I, I grew up eating this stuff and uh, my wife's Vietnamese and uh, it's called Yao Moon in, in Vietnamese and they, uh, they eat a ton of it as well. And uh, it's my favorite green to cook with. 
All right, but the, our pan is hot now, the oil's hot. So literally you're just gonna give this a quick sear on both sides. Just to get that heat going. And then we're gonna throw it in the oven. And in the oven, it literally will go, it'll go pretty quick, it'll cook pretty quick, maybe like 14 minutes max, 15 minutes. Like it's a pretty high temp oven and uh, the, the banana leaf really protects the skin so nothing burns too much, nothing gets too much char. And um, like I said, it's best on the grill, charcoal, but we make do, we make do. Okay. We'll flip this guy now. Already it smells crazy. Uh, the fragrance of banana, banana leaf is, it just, it's the island. Like, it doesn't matter what island either. Like, it just smells like uh, getting off the plane in a tropical place. And it's like, who doesn't love that? That feeling is like the best. <laughs> I know, and that, that exact flavor, like the smell, it goes right into the fish, right? Yeah, it goes right into the fish. Um, especially since you've scored it. Um, yeah, it just, like, like I said, it tastes like the island to me. All right, so, so we got a good- For the good question, um, we just got a quick question. Where would they get the banana leaf? The banana leaf will be uh, in the frozen section at your Asian market as well. There's lots of, lots of different kinds too. So this guy's going right into the oven. 400 degrees, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay. So now for the water spinach. This looks like a lot, but it's like regular spinach. It'll cook down to like almost nothing. So I am gonna cut it a little bit smaller. I've washed it, I pre-washed it. Wash everything you order, you get these days from the market. Okay, I'm just gonna cut it a little bit. Okay. Chef, how long have you been cooking for? Um, so I started cooking late in my life. I uh, started cooking like, like for real when I was, when I was 27. Um, like I went to school, that was my first intro into cooking, um, was when I was 27 going to George Brown college. And then, um, so I'm 41 now. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, 14 years there. And you went to school at George Brown? Yes, I did. All right, now for the water spinach, um, there's a, same, uh, a lot of the same uh, ingredients we're gonna use. So we're gonna use that sambal again. We're gonna use uh, the bagaong again, um, some uh, onion, uh, garlic, we're gonna use lime juice. Um, the difference here is we're gonna use some coconut cream. This stuff is amazing, Savoy coconut cream. Mm -hmm stuff to get and some more fish sauce and we'll see the balance the balance is like uh, we might have to add some some uh honey some sugar some sweetness um but i'm gonna use a big pot just because it's so much uh like greens at the beginning it takes a, a couple minutes to just cook down you know um mm -hmm. on the heat pretty high heat you want and this this takes like no time at all either so fast and it's super delicious um, so I'm gonna bring this to to like a high temp again we'll start with uh, just vegetable oil okay. while that's heating up I'm just gonna slice some uh, onion garlic and ginger. Go super thin if you want, go thicker if you want. 
no real rules in the, well, there's no real, real rules in a cooking period. Who taught you how to cook, Chef? Who taught me how to cook? Uh, I'm kind of self-taught, but then obviously trained by many great uh, chefs. Uh, like my family, like my, my, my family, there's, they cook and they love food, but there's like no like one person you would go to for all the recipes you know what I mean like I didn't have that kind of influence in my life like my grandmother was like pretty old like and she passed when I was really young and uh, my Lola only lived in Canada with us for like I think one year she was a great cook apparently but I was like super young when she was here so um yeah so that's it and then other than that like all the chefs that I've worked under you know some really oh, for great sure. ones too. Lots of experience. Yeah. In a short amount of time. I I think I was I think it was uh I was lucky to start so late, to be honest with you, because I'd gotten all that partying out of me and I I was old enough to like focus and like do a lot like at like in, in a short amount of time. Like like I said, I was twenty seven when I started cooking. Most chefs these days are head chefs when they're twenty seven, like for years already you know like the way the way it goes like you can move up pretty quick if you're super dedicated so so just a little bit of ginger here as well all right All right, into the pan with all the ginger, garlic, and onion. Just get a good sweat on that. Miles and Leah say hi. Okay, get my lines here. Everything ready. So because I use a lot of fish sauce, like I don't use a lot of like salt, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm the same. When I cook with um, patis, yeah. I don't use sauce very, I'm sorry, salt. Yeah. I still use salt when it's needed, but for the most, for the most part, I season everything with uh, fish sauce, with patis. Even meats, like you can like marinate meats and then fry them after. And the flavor is just crazy good. Okay. So we got our uh, garlic, ginger, and onion sweat off. Now I'm gonna start building the flavors for this sauce. So again, just a little bit of the chili paste, Um, bagoong again. This is like a preference thing too. Like some people are so psycho about it and they just will put the whole bottle in like everything they cook, which is totally cool. Um, but like, there's no rules. You can put a little bit just for depth. You can put a lot because you love it, you know? Chef, can you show everybody the, um, the fish sauce bottle? And we want to know if that's sauce, the yeah. best one. So this one is three crabs. It's good. It's a little bit more expensive than say your normal fish sauce, but it's worth it. Okay. Now I'm going honey. Fish sauce. My favorite brand of like fish sauce that's not like 20 bucks a bottle is uh it's this fish sauce called uh Fuquoc fish sauce like all the best fish sauces uh well that they say uh, are made from anchovies uh in a from a part of vietnam uh called Fuquoc and there's one fish fish sauce brand that's just called Fuquoc and it's super good super delicious okay now i'm gonna add the um the kang kong the water spinach all of it. High heat again, keep it on the high heat. Take a 
Rick's going to cook it down. Get a little bit of sweat on it before you add the coconut cream. It'll soften a little bit. And then you add your coconut cream. What add the whole can. So this, we'll just wait till this comes up to temp, like up to a boil. The uh, water spinach should be soft and cooked all the way through. And then we're going to give it a re-season. Like we're going to taste it, re-season it if it needs more salt, more fish sauce, more uh, more honey, more bugger along. It's at this point, it's all up to personal preference how you how you like to how you like to eat it. Right. I'm gonna check on the fish. Oh, I wish you could smell this. But that's what that guy's starting to look like. The banana leaf is starting to brown. This is what you want. Okay. Going back in for another few minutes. The lime juice. <coughs> and I'm actually going to put this over on this other burner because we're almost done, really. <laughs> That's amazing. It's so fast. It happens fast. Yeah. Um, so we, we got, got a kind of question for you. Ready to go, but um, yeah, it does happen pretty quick. Um, we do have a question for you, Chef. Sure. How do you balance heat richness as of the acid and sweetness? Um, honestly, it's it's just like repetitively tasting everything all the time. Like uh, taste it once you add something, taste it after it's cooked for a little bit. Like things will change as they cook. Uh, lime juice is the freshest if, if it's like freshly squeezed. If you let it sit for a little bit, uh, it starts to get a little more acidic and, and a little more harsh. So it's like um, the softest when it's like fresh. Um, fish sauce actually jacks up the acidity levels of everything too, uh, just how it uh, like affects your palate. So um, if it's already sour and you wanna add salt to it, just be aware of how much fish sauce you add because the acidity will jump up as well. Um, and like I said, most things are, are, are subjective, like how you like it. Um, so yeah, just, you just gotta know like what little things to add and to do to just kinda balance things out. Um, Filipino cuisine is like high in uh, salt and um, like salt levels and sour. Um, so obviously use sugar to kind of balance that out, just to round it out a little bit. Um, that's it. That's awesome. I hope that I hope that helped to some bit. All right, so garlic fried rice. Uh, I've eaten this almost every day since I've uh, <laughs> been home. Me too. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the rice here. While he grabs the rice. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. I'm Richie Valdez. Uh, we're, we're here, part of the Battle Live events. We're actually trying to raise funds for Sick Kids Hospital, as well as the Montreal Children's Hospital. So you can just hit up the link in my bio. Uh, we're also gonna post this on YouTube. The links are gonna be available. We, we, um, we're really trying to raise funds during the time. We realize it's difficult, but any dollar counts to help out the kids. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Awesome. So the water spinach is done. It's so good. Do you drain it? No, no, no. I'm gonna keep all that coconut uh, cream in there. Um, that's what makes ginetaang ginetaang is the coconut. So right. um, yeah, it's very delicious. We <laughs> like all wish all, we were these there. Dishes, these dishes like are, are so island food to me. Like it just, this dish in particular, it reminds me of, uh, when I was in El Nido in the Philippines, because when I went, it wasn't like super, like that much tourist, like 
was it super touristy back then. So pretty much all I saw being cooked was whole fish on the grill wrapped in banana leaves. Uh, just whatever seasonal veg they had, which was Kang Kong at the time. It was so, so good. Simple, simple, but it it just takes you to a different place. And um, yeah, that's why I love that's why I love these dishes. You know? Okay, garlic fried rice. A couple of things important about the garlic fried rice. Your rice is the most important. Uh, it's best if it's day old. Okay, and then when you're, uh, before you throw it in the frying pan, make sure you break it up so that the, uh, the grains are separate. This is a little bit too wet still. I cooked this uh, early this morning and it didn't dry out enough. Um, but at your house, like if you have like day old rice, that is perfect for uh, like garlic fried rice, for any fried rice really. It, the texture is just the best. So just minced garlic. Your heat should be um, like a medium heat on this, not too, too hot. The garlic will burn super fast. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. You do want a good amount of oil because you're kind of like deep frying the garlic. That'll give you the most like even cook on it. If you have too little oil, like you'll burn some parts and the other parts won't get cooked enough. You want it to be like fully toasted, like really uh, like golden brown. Okay, gonna let that go for a bit. I'm gonna check on the fish. It might be ready. Now, how do you check if the fish is done? So, I'm gonna just open it up a little bit. I'm gonna take a peek. Now, for fish, you want it to slide off the bone like, like pretty easily. So because of those slits that we made in earlier, you can actually like move it around a bit and see how stuck to the bone it is. If it's like still like hanging onto that bone, it still needs a couple minutes. This this needs a couple minutes still. It's almost there. Uh, I would say three more minutes in the oven and we're good. Now to finish off the rice. So I don't know if you can see that. You can see that color really. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. The thing with garlic, when you burn it, it gets super bitter. So let's be careful. You can also use, where is that stuff? Hold on. Or you can use this stuff. <laughs> the store-bought uh, garlic, uh, like fried garlic. Okay, so. Okay. so. That's the color. That's the color I'm looking for on the garlic. Just still oil everywhere. No problem. Okay, we're gonna add the rice and I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. The rice will cool down the pan, so it won't the garlic shouldn't burn. Let's mix it all in. Chef, what kind of rice are you using? Uh, I'm just using jasmine rice. Long grain? Yeah, long grain rice is fine. Um, like broken rice, like broken Vietnamese rice is good. Uh, what I wouldn't use is like uh, glutinous rice, sticky rice. That's like one of the ones I wouldn't use. Okay, that's it. Just make sure your rice is like heated through, like your, your grains of rice aren't too like clumped together. Like I said, this was a little bit too wet, but uh, still gonna be super tasty. And if you want, you can add a bit of salt in there too. This time I'll use salt. I don't want to add any more moisture to it. So no patisse. <laughs> the patisse will come after. Okay. How's it going? Everything's good? Yes. One question for you. 
Yes. So it's around the sesame oil. And um, people say a dish is yummy, but all you can taste is sesame. So what do you say about that? Uh, sesame oil? Yep. Um, uh, like I don't, uh, it, is, it is very strong sesame oil, right? I don't use a ton of it. If I do use it, I use it very sparingly just because it is a very strong flavor. Um, I don't know. <laughs> if you like, if you like sesame, then you're gonna love it, right? But uh, if you if you don't like things to be overpowered, then you probably want to stay away from it more more than others. But right. um, like when I use sesame oil, I, I use it kind of like as a finishing uh, oil, almost like a really light drizzle on stuff. I don't really cook too many things in it. I will use it to scorch things. Like, uh, like if you have like a steamed fish, if you like bring your sesame oil to like a really high temp and then pour that like right on top of your fish. That's a great way to use sesame oil. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we'll do the, uh, the South Sao one. Everything's pretty much good to go. I'm gonna get a little bowl here. And this, like I said, this is just like a dipping sauce, a condiment. There's many different variations of it. When I was little, my mom always had patisse, black pepper, garlic, and chopped tomatoes on the table all the time. And that was the South Salon. That was our house of South Salon. Um, but we're gonna do some coconut vinegar, some patisse, of course, these guys. Uh, and I like it spicy, so we're gonna put a uh, chili in it. This is a long red chili or like a red Anaheim chili. These have a little bit of heat, but not a lot. Like those little tiny red chilies are so, so hot. Sorry, I almost swore there. They're so hot. Um, but these you can eat and the heat, you can taste the heat, but they taste really good. And um, it's not like burn your face off type, type stuff. Some, some fresh garlic. And um, where'd it go? Some fresh cracked black pepper and a touch of sugar just to balance everything out. And this one, again, it's preference. If you like it more sour, then you put more vinegar. If you like it uh, more savory, then you put more fish sauce. So um, yeah, that's it. And this, like you just take a little spoonful of this with some of your rice, some of your fish, and it's the best. Okay, and then just sliced garlic. And this I'll just have like bottles of it in my house, just hanging out. The longer it sits about, the better it becomes, the tastier it becomes. Okay. So other than cooking Filipino food, what is your second favorite cuisine? Second favorite cuisine. Um, well, my wife would be upset if I didn't say Vietnamese. Love Vietnamese food. I love like, to be honest, like all Southeast Asian food is like crazy for me right now. Like uh, I know everyone has a debate on, oh, is French food best or is uh, Italian food best? But the flavor profile of uh, Southeast Asian food, like Thai food, Vietnamese food, Filipino food, Malaysia, India, Laos, like that whole region is more up my alley. Like I love, love, love Italian food and French food, don't get me wrong. But um, for me, if I had to pick, it would always be something from Southeast Asia, like a really warm curry, uh, like a Thai curry or a Malaysian curry. So good. One of my favorite dishes of all time is called rendang. That's like an Indonesian like curry. It's just packed with flavor. Uh, it, and those, those dishes, they're like, the balance is more difficult to achieve. Um, but when you do achieve it, it, it like the, the plate sings so much and the, the flavor is, is crazy. Umami out of this world. And uh, yeah, I'm always in search of that next umami bomb. Uh, really, you know. Okay. 
Okay, so just some chili now. Lots of cracked black pepper. Just a pinch of sugar. That's it. Oh, so good. I think we're ready to go. Awesome. So I got my fish here. I'm going to open it up. Actually, I'm going to transfer it to a plate and then open it up. Moment of truth. While you're doing that, Chef, can you speak to sourcing ingredients in the GTA? Yeah. Um... <laughs> For sure, there's our our supplier list is pretty long. We use a different we use a lot of different um, suppliers for certain things. Like obviously, our Asian food, um, our Asian ingredients come from like an Asian market in Chinatown. We use um, we use them quite a bit, but we also use some like wild foraging suppliers. Um, uh, there's a lot out there. I don't know what it's going to be like when we get back to cooking. Like, uh, like I haven't been in my restaurant for over two months now, I guess. Um, or close to it. Um, but um, yeah, there's, there's a ton of, of great suppliers in Toronto. And you can pretty much get anything from all over the world. You just got to, you know, do a little bit of research, look for it. If, if you really want a product, um, and you don't know how to go, go about getting it, just ask a chef that you know uses that product and they should they should let you know about their plug. Like, unless they're like super stingy, like they should, like, cause you want, like we want our suppliers to, to prosper too, right? So right. Um, if there's anything you guys see me cooking and you wanna know where I get it from, then I'll definitely tell you for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks, Chef. We're lucky in Toronto. Like, you can get anything, whatever you want. Like, I'm, I'm in Windsor right now. It's not the easiest. Like, the, the, mark, the Asian market's actually pretty good here, but there's just stuff that I won't be able to find, find here. Like, it's just impossible. I'm surprised that, like, I found all this, to be honest. And when I went to the Asian market, um, it was really pretty good. But Toronto's just next level. You can get anything. And Toronto, too, like, really... Everyone in Toronto really um, pays attention to seasonality. Right. They're in here, not so much. Like uh, ramps are starting to come into season now in Ontario and in Toronto. Like I've seen everyone start to use them already, uh, but here, like nobody really knows about it as much. Like there's people that do, obviously, but it's not like everywhere you go. You know. So if anyone's from Windsor out there, uh, Windsor grad, <laughs> let me know where to get wild ramps. Uh, Wild leeks. Anyways, here we go with the fish. Okay. We're all drooling. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so literally just open it up. And I like to serve it like in the leaf still. That rustic look. Okay. Let me check sure, make sure it's fully cooked. Yeah, it slides off the bone. At this point, you can take a little bit more of your marinade just for aesthetic and put it on there. Okay. Fish is good to go. Actually, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I made this green sauce the other day, which will look great on there. Uh, not in the recipes or anything like that, but just gonna add that. There's some freshness and color on there. That's the secret That's ingredient, the secret. right? <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. So that one's already in this bowl. I'm just gonna put my garlic rice into this bowl here. Chef, your fans want to Uber from you. What's that? Your fans want to have you Uber food to them. <laughs> Be some hefty delivery charges coming from Windsor, I tell you what. Three and a half hours. Okay, so garlic fried rice. Okay. I'll do close ups of everything with the camera angle soon. It looks so good. Okay. So this is the Ginataan Kang Kong. Now this one I like to finish with some of those fried garlic and these are fried shallots as well that you can get in the grocery store in the Asian market. Sprinkle some of those on for texture. And that's it, really. We're good to go. I'm going to do a quick tidy up here, but just get everything out of the way. While Chef is cleaning up, hopefully you don't have an echo. I'm just checking. Um, so again, like my name is Richie Valdez. I know a few of you have tuned in a little bit later. Um, we're part of the Battle Canada Live crew. Um, we're facilitating these Cook for Causes. Chef, that looks amazing. Thank you for tuning in. We are raising funds for both sick kids. Sorry. We're raising funds for both sick kids as well as Montreal Children's Hospital. You can check out the link in my bio as well as the Battle Canada Instagram bio. We're really here to raise funds for the kids. Um, we really appreciate anything um, that you can provide. That's why we're doing this every single day. We're doing it during this COVID time. We're trying to make a difference for our community. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, for asking a lot of really engaging questions. I know a few, have asked, uh, a few of you asked um, who I am. Again, Richie Valdez, I'm part of the Battle Canada crew. Um, you can find me on Instagram as well, Battle Canada or Richie Valdez. Uh, I've known Chef Dennis for quite some time. I have followed all of his pop-ups, right, Chef? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's an amazing chef of Dialo in Toronto. So you can check him out there once their doors open it uh, again. But in the meantime, um, make sure to tune into his Filipino Quarantino for all of this amazing good food. Thanks so much for uh, for hanging out and for having me. My folks have been eating pretty good. I bet they have. Uh, since I've been home. But yeah. Looks amazing. Thank you. You know what you're going to have to do, right? What's that? Um, you know how like they do every chef like on TV cuts into the food like in slow motion and you get to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll give it a try here. I'll give it a try. Awesome. Turn this down a bit again. All right, so like I said, I'm, I like going in and getting a bit of everything in the first bite. So look at this fish here, super juicy, delicious. Get some of the garlic rice, a little bit of the Guinness and Kan Kong. Now look, I know I'm using my hands, but sorry, that's how Filipinos do. And then some Mine. salsa on. Yum. Fire. 
<laughs> one of my favorite fish. It's so good. Flaky. The marinade is nice and spicy. Oh, yeah. And this fish doesn't have a ton of bones either, so you don't really have to worry too much about choking. It looks amazing. Sorry about the echo, guys. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let me turn down this volume. Sorry. <laughs> it is cruel, isn't it? <laughs> um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Richie Valdez here from the Battle Canada Live events. This is our Cook for Cause, raising money for sick kids and Montreal Children's Hospital. Thank you, Dennis, for Chef Dennis, for like cooking live for us. Thank you. And um, Chef, real quick, like I remember uh, you joined us for our Battle 416 celebrity game back last summer. How did you enjoy that? It was the best. Uh, I, I recently got back to playing ball a lot. So every chance I get to be on the court, I really enjoy. And it was such a great event and also for a great cause too. So um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me whenever you have me. Awesome. Um, I think I answered everybody's questions. Thank you for sending them over. Sorry, there's an echo. Again, links in the bio, check us out. I wanna shout out our sponsors. There's Salad Master, AC TriStar, as well as the Paper Crane. Thanks, Chef, for everything. Thank you, guys. Talk Stay to you guys safe. soon. Be good. Stay up. Filipino Quarantino. Shout out to Linda. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.